Um, I just uh, have a couple of things I'm going to go over as uh, before we turn it over to Juan Pablo. Um, first, I just want to let it remind everybody that next year's sound investment composer is Peter Shin. We are very excited about him. Um, and we'll have more information coming out in the in the next several weeks about sound investment for next year. And uh, but you can go online at laco.org slash sound invest. That's laco.org slash sound invest. And uh, you can find all the updated information and also renew your sound investment um, membership for next year. Um, so just to give a quick overview of what we're going to do here tonight, this is um, Juan Pablo is going to take us through a salon much like he does at any other time of the year. And um, we're going to get to see a version of the finished score. Um, we will hear some audio clips. These are MIDI recordings, uh, not, not MIDI recordings, but MIDI files that will play. You'll get to hear it. It won't sound exactly like the orchestra, but it will give us an idea of what the finished piece is like. And we will also have some Q&A with Juan Pablo throughout uh, the salon tonight. So as, uh, as that happens, Juan Pablo will invite us to ask questions. If you take your mouse and uh, just cursor it over the screen, you'll get some options. There is a chat button on the, um, in the bottom portion of the screen. If you click that, you'll be able to actually message us if you have a question, please submit your question in the chat function of the program. You can either ask the full question, and Juan Pablo will see that in the queue, or you can say, I have a question, and then we can actually uh, in, uh, allow you to speak and ask the question almost as if you were in the same room with us. Um, uh, Mike Mancias is moderating the uh, program with us. He's waving at us right now, and he'll be able to uh, also assist if there's any other uh, technical glitches. And if, when it's your turn to ask a question, if you so choose to want to do that in person, we'll put the, um, the program on you much like it is on me right now. So um, with that, I just want to say a couple of thank yous. Um, we've had just an overwhelmingly positive experience throughout this year. Uh, of course, a huge thank you to Juan Pablo for everything that he's done. Thanks to, thanks to um, Jaime Martin from afar. I don't think he was able to join us tonight uh, as he's in London right now. Thanks to Ellen Reed. Thanks to Juan Pablo's wife, Marissa, who does so much behind the scenes and the biggest thanks to everyone who's with us today, all of the sound investors that are making this entire program possible. So thank you so much to you. And with that, I'm happy to turn it over to Juan Pablo. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. It's a, it's a pleasure to see you, even if it's on screen. I'm very grateful to have this opportunity to share the, the final product of our Lucha Libre with you. And also to thank you for, for joining me in this amazing journey. It has been hands down the best uh, composition experience that I've ever had. And that's thanks to you. And, and I'm very happy with how the piece turned out. So I, I, I really love this opportunity to just come full circle and, and let you guys know that we, we finished the piece and, and that we were successful in this crazy adventure uh, together. and. I really, really loved LACO Sound Investment Program that really is designed for composers to be able to take risks, to try things out, try new things, to work closely with the orchestra and to dream big. And, and this was definitely a huge dream of mine to write this piece. So thank you for uh, making this dream come, to, come true. Um, uh, I want to encourage all of you to get a glass of wine if you can. If you want to cheer, cheer with me. Yes, I see Steve. Absolutely, cheers. Up. Yeah, yeah. So we can cheer to this new new baby. Ah, many of you. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> Ryan Sweeney. Yeah, awesome. Cheers, cheers. This is really, I mean, this was really a team effort. And, and thank you for having uh, faith in this crazy idea and, and I, I think it turned out great so and I hope you think so too. So on tonight's agenda I'd like to 
give a quick recap recap about the piece just for the people that are joining us on on Facebook and, and are being introduced to Lucha Libre for the first time. And then I'd like to play through the the six luchador themes in their final orchestrated versions, just, just so you can hear uh, how they turned out. And then we have a special uh, performer. We have Michael Thornton, the principal horn with Leco, is joining us all the way from Colorado, I believe. Is that correct? Awesome. He's going to play uh, an excerpt from the piece and do a demonstration for us. So it's going to be amazing. And then um, we're going to hear the whole piece with a commentary from me. So basically what was going to happen is we're going to hear the piece and I'm going to be typing up on the chat the description of what's going on in the piece. So you can be listening and following along the narrative of the piece. And I'm also going to use, I got obviously my all of my luchador masks with me. So I'm going to put on kind of like a puppet show and be showing you like what character is competing against which and, and hopefully that'll, that'll, that'll work well and give you a, a good, a good idea of what we're going to expect once the piece is premiered. Um, and then lastly, once we hear everything, we'll open it up for questions, comments, and yeah, open up the conversation to all of you. So, uh, Lucha Libre, this work is uh, a musical recreation of an epic Lucha Libre Mexican wrestling match where traditionally you have three technicos or good guys facing three rudos, the bad guys, the, the villains. Uh, and the deeper meaning behind Lucha Libre is that it's, it's a representation uh, about the struggle between good and evil, be it in society or within ourselves, where each fighter serves as a symbol for something, uh, religion, uh, death, a tradition, righteousness. And it, and it gives the audience an opportunity to see these, uh, these things materialized on a stage so they can root for them, um, complain against them, and have like a very cathartic experience when doing so. And I came up with this idea after thinking about the fact that classical musicians are very technically uh, agile and, and prolific. And that when we go to a classical music concert, we, we go to kind of see the impossible happen on stage uh, because not only are players playing stuff that's very complex on their own instrument, but they're also intricately doing so with other players locking in and that's, basically what also happens in a Mexican wrestling match. You know, all of the moves are choreographed. The fighters have previously worked together and know what's going to happen. So I wanted to make that connection and kind of depict the, the wrestlers, the Mexican wrestlers as superheroes, and especially since I've been a huge fan of Lakos players for so, so long. I chose kind of like my superheroes on, on the stage and wanted to um have them basically eventually wear the luchador uh, masks as a hat during the performance and we're gonna see uh, how the six luchadores that i chose are gonna face each other um and compete so what's gonna happen is that uh each character has its own theme and these themes are gonna be competing against each other. And I chose players within the orchestra that are gonna be sitting in their regular position, uh, but I chose them so that they would geographically face each other. So let's meet the, the fighters and we'll, we'll freshen up with the, the theme so you can also hear what their music sounds like. Um, so from the Rudos team, the bad guys, the first one we have is, which is I think the coolest one because it has the most complex mask. This is La Parca or the character of death. It's gonna be played by the timpanist. So it Lakos Wade Coolbreath. And this character represents uh, Mexico's kind of comic vision of, of death. They have a very joyful perspective on death. 
in real life, this fighter usually comes up on, on, on the ring with a guitar, playing a guitar, playing love songs to their to his opponents. So what I did in the theme is you're, you're gonna he hear the pizzicato strings emulating a guitar. And then the timpani is always gonna be doubled by instruments such as like the temple blocks. So you get like a wooden sound. Uh, combined with the timpani sounding like a skeleton. So Mike, let's hear track number one, which is La Parca's theme. Quick question, Juan Pablo. Would you like the theme to be played with just you as the spotlight or should we see people listening to the music? Let's see people listening and reacting. Ah. <laughs> In real time. Okay, here yeah. we go. Let's play it. La Parca. <laughs> So that's La Parca's theme. Then we have Rayo de Jalisco or Jalisco's Thunder. I'm originally from the state of Jalisco, which is where mariachi music was invented. So the, the theme of this character is basically a mariachi song played by a trumpet. Uh, in Leco, Eric Jobel is gonna play this theme. So let's hear Rayo de Jalisco, Jalisco's Thunder. My favorite one actually. the leader of this group of the rudos, the villains, is Blue Demon. I'm actually wearing his shirt today in support of this fighter. Uh, this is actually like the most popular villain in Lucha Libre history. Um, uh, he starred in 50 films and is, was very iconic. And the music that I wrote for this uh, character is a cumbia, which is a Colombian dance. Uh, that was then incorporated in Mexico and it, this is kind of the music that you hear in the most like hip neighborhoods in Mexico City. So let's hear uh, track three, the music of Blue Demon. <laughs> I forgot to mention the, the instrument playing uh, Blue Demon is the cello, principal cello, which is Andrew Schulman, with which I thought was the perfect musician for this character. Um, all right, so that's the, the team of the Rudos. Then we go to the Technicos. First one I'm gonna show you is Mystico or the Mystical. Uh, it's gonna be, his theme is performed by the piano. And as you see this, the, the mask of this fighter has a cross and then angel wings. So it represents religion and, and especially in Mexico, the Catholic religion. So what I did with this theme um, is that I turned the piano or I doubled the piano with wind instruments and string instruments so that it had a very thick sound and sounded like a church organ. So that's kind of the, the quality of sound you're gonna hear in this theme, a very majestic theme. And we're gonna be, in this piece, we're gonna be seeing uh, Mystico basically face La Parca. So we have uh, two opposites, uh, kind of death and life after death, if you will. So let's hear the theme of El Mystico. <laughs> And 
just to point out, as you will see, the each of the th the three pairs that I chose are geographically facing each other. So Mystico is the 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 piano facing the timpani. So when we see this premiered, we're gonna see how the the characters are gonna be facing each other as they compete against each other. The second character in the technical is the good guys team team is Mil Mascaras or One Thousand Masks. In real life, this uh, fighter was a poet, a painter, an actor. So that's why he called himself the Thousand Mask because he had uh, he was multifaceted. He had many talents. And so what you'll you'll hear in this theme that's be, that's played by the flute is that the music interchanges between pentatonic music, music with five notes, to chromatic, more uh, colorful, to bitonal, so many kinds of music on top of each other. And Mystico, representing the, the multi-talented genius, is going to be facing Rayo de Jalisco, which is a representation of tradition and roots. So basically, in a sense, like who you are versus who you aspire to become. So this is Mil Mascaras on the flute. And finally, the, the star of the show and the leader of this group is El Santo, the saint, uh, represents good hope and justice uh, with this iconic silver mask that he never took off during his lifetime. So people never knew his real identity until this fighter died. It's basically like the Mexican Superman and it has the most lyrical theme of all of the fighters and it's being played by the violin. So. Uh, Margaret Bajer is going to be the El Santo competing against Andrew Shulman on the chat on the cello. So let's hear El Santo's music. So those are the, the six themes and the ideas that uh, they will face each other, sometimes one against one, then two against two, and eventually three against three. That's, that's the main narrative of the piece. And when I came up with this concept, I really wanted to be uh, even more inspired to write music that corresponded and that felt like each specific character. So I got together with a friend of mine, a poet named Dario Carrillo and ask him to collaborate with me and to write a script of what a Lucha Libre announcer would say to introduce and describe each of these uh, fighters once they, they were taking the, the, the ring or the stage. So we wrote a script, basically uh, narrating the whole fight or how, how this was, was going to happen. And what I did is once the script was finished and I got and I had a description of each of these characters, I would read it out loud and then record myself as if I were a, a Mexican wrestling announcer. And then once I had a good recording of that narration, I would quickly go to the piano to find the notes and rhythms that corresponded with my narration. So tonight, Michael is gonna demonstrate how that works because the French horn is one of the main announcers throughout the piece. Initially, I had decided that only the French horn would narrate uh, what was going on. But then when we had our third salon and tried it out, I, I, I thought that it, you know, I had like, it, it almost sounded like a French horn concerto. So I, so I decided to use other instruments and have one, one of each different instruments uh, introduce a di different character. But still, my favorite narrations are in the French horn. And what we'll do is, I, I want to show you uh, how La Parca is introduced in this piece. 
And I'm gonna read out loud first, as if I were uh, an announcer um, from this script that we wrote, and then I'm gonna, gonna demonstrate how that spoken narrative was translated into French horn music. So uh, basically uh, the goal was that when you experience this piece live, you would kind of get the same quality and feeling of an instrument introducing a character. So this is the, this is the text for La Parca, and I'm gonna paste the English translation in the chat so that everyone can follow along if, if you want to. So here we go. Muy cerca de la medianoche, buscando almas para acompañarlas al inframundo, el amo de la risa que todos llevamos dentro, la parca. All right, so now let's hear Michael and see how that works out. <laughs> All right, that was awesome. Yeah, let's give Michael a hand. That was amazing. Yeah, so that's that's the whole idea of those introductions to to um, uh, these characters. So basically, to have that feeling of having a narrator telling the story as we go along. So. Okay, so just a basic narrative of the piece before we hear it. We're gonna have an introduction, basically uh, the announcers welcoming you to this experience. So like said, telling you like, good evening, Los Angeles. This is where we're gonna experience. We have six legends that are gonna compete against each other. Then each luchador is presented. Uh, so we'll hear the six themes uh, now all interlaced. So the six themes that we just heard kind of uh, tied together. Then the match begins. We have one against one, two against two, and then eventually the three fighters fighting against the other three. And at the end, the winning team is announced. And remember that, uh, well, in Lucha Libre, once the ref counts to three on the floor and an, and an opponent is pinned down, that marks the end of the match. So we're gonna hear that. And once that happened, we get a celebration from the winning team, which we're gonna discover who wins today, okay? So let me just get set up my, my puppet show. Okay. And what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in the chat, I'm gonna type the, uh, the commentary of what's going on. So Mike is gonna play the audio and on the chat, you can follow along who's being introduced who's fighting against who, I'm, I'm gonna type that and also show the masks. So yeah, uh, look at your screen as we go along. Okay, I'm ready, Mike. Ready okay. Here, yes, here's the digital premiere of Lucha Libre in its MIDI form. Vámonos. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
That was awesome. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <going> cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so let's open it up to questions, comments. Yeah, uh, Juan Pablo, before we jump to the questions, um, yeah. there were quite a few people who came in, I think, just a few minutes after 7. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to um, remind everybody uh, that if you go to the website, as we're looking forward to next year's sound investment, it's laco.org slash sound invest, where you can find info that will be coming out on next year's sound investment and you can renew. Um, in addition to all of the, uh, the, really this is possible because of all of our sound investment members. Yeah. Um, but in addition to that, we've got a few sponsors that have um, made this remarkably possible. And I want to recognize them while everyone's here. Uh, Anna Marie Spataro, board director, uh, one of our three sponsors for this year. Uh, board chair Leslie Lassiter is sponsoring this. And the Schlichtings, uh, Helen and Jay Schlichting, um, are also sponsoring this. So a real special thank you to all of them. Thank you so much. Yeah, this, yeah. As, as I said in the, in the beginning, this has been the most fun and exciting experience I've had as a composer to do this. And a great part it was to have you guys as a team to be able to, you know, lose the the, the fear of doing this and, and just jump in and, and go for it. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. And obviously it will sound a thousand, a million times better with the orchestra live, but I just wanted to share this with you so you could get some, a sense of uh, finishing the piece together and then look forward to hearing it live, hopefully soon. A world premiere will be very exciting when it comes. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, not this weekend, though. But we have, um, <laughs> since everyone's here, I, you, I know you want to do questions. Um, just to just to refresh, um, if you move your cursor over the uh, over the screen, over Juan Pablo's face, you'll see the uh, options come up where you can click on chat down at the bottom portion. Uh, it's probably the second option from the right, and there you can actually write your question. Um, if you want to ask a question live, that would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, you could just tell us there yeah. you've got a question and, and we'll spotlight you um, and then and we can do some Q&A. This is great. I see there's one question in the queue already from Ray Lowe. Is everyone cool if I bring him up? Yeah. yeah. Are you guys ready? Let's, let's spotlight this guy. Oh, am I unmuted? You are yeah. unmuted, Ray. <laughs> That was awesome, Juan Pablo. Thank you, thank you. Hey, I was wondering, what, what sample libraries are you using and why? Um, it's the base, it's like the, the basic Sibelius, which is the notation software I use. It's basically those sounds. So I don't have anything extra, extra fancy because I, I, I like to leave the, the orchestration part to the, to the imagination as well and not depend too much on things sounding good. So it's been more, using my experience of how I imagine things to sound. Hopefully it didn't sound that bad and it gave you an idea of what's going on. But oh, yeah. it sounded great. 
Hey, oh, great, I... great. Excellent. I'm Can happy. I get a second question in? Yeah, yeah, please do, please do. When you're doubling the piano, uh -huh. I think you heard clarinet and something else. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it was clarinet and flutes and oboes. So basically oh, what I'm doing, um, let's see, I'll show you. Uh, I can't see my, my piano keyboard, but basically uh, what I did is I, I to get that, to get like an organ sound, yeah. whenever I had a piano chord, I would double with the winds at a different register, like a, like a, at, a, at a separate distance, but that sounded like harmonics above that chord. So it's not the same chord sounding, it's something, uh, you know, slightly higher that makes it sound like as if you were hearing an organ. When organists, you know, pull stops, they're basically uh, turning on flutes to, yeah. to uh, activate harmonics above that. So that's what you were hearing and, and you're totally correct. It, clarinet what was, was awesome about that is it did get that kind of, um, I don't know how to describe it, but kind of that, uh, the, like the diaspora of, of the organ, but yeah, 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 you, awesome. you get this percussion which you don't get with an organ, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, that was totally my, my goal. And I always like to do that when I use an instrument, I try to treat it slightly different. So, for instance, you might have heard the, the cello, uh, the cello solo kind of sounded like accordion music. That was my idea to yeah. sound, to, you know, using thirds and stuff to make it sound like an accordion. And then the timpani, which was always doubled by uh, temple blocks, I wanted to go for like a marimba sound to get like that wooden sound. Yeah. So each, each each instrument has its its own exploration of how things can sound uh, when instruments combine together, which I think is the coolest thing about orchestrating. You get all all of these colors that you can explore when people join for forces. It's like cooking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see another question from Steven Block. Are we ready for him? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to unmute him. Let me find him. There we go. You're, you're free, Steven. Got, thank you. <laughs> Hi, Juan Pablo. How are you? Hey, good to you. Go to you. <laughs> uh, the question I had is, are there any composers whose music influenced this piece? I, I have a particular one in mind that I just, I don't want to give tell you right out, but I'm just curious as to okay. who one definitely Charles Ives, uh, okay. American composer. I was uh, a challenge about writing this piece is that I had to come up with six different themes that you know were characteristically different, but at the same time that could work on top of each other, like one against like two, uh, four, and six themes working together at once. So that was a huge challenge. And Ives is someone that does that very well. Like he, he can go from like things overlapping to to being separate so the, he was uh, one of my main influences in this piece just in the, the thought process um who who did you have in mind who did you, who Let, did you leonard bernstein bernstein yeah i love yeah i love bernstein i, love I just i felt i felt a lot of stuff from him in, in that piece but that was just me yeah. i guess anyway, no, 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 yeah i love it's him. a great it's a great piece by hey. the way for for those of those people yeah. who are making having influence here is there any way we can get this played at the first concert next season we have some influence influential people yeah yeah <laughs> my, that, that would be what i'd like to see oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're you're muted ben. oh is ben muted ben, ben i can unmute ben. <laughs> you want to say hi ben hi everybody for those of you I, I haven't met yet, I'm Ben Kedwalder. I'm the new here. This is my dog, Bo. We're very much enjoying this. And Juan Pablo, first I want to say, bravissimo. That was Thank you. fantastic. And I love, too, that we got this live um, narration that happened. Yeah, yeah. I feel like this is something that we can only get this kind of, included with the puppet show, we can only get this kind of interaction through this medium. Yeah. Great Absolutely. example of how this this digital platform can be used in a really innovative way that brings it to us personally mm -hmm. in a way that we wouldn't actually get in the concert hall. So I'm really grateful to you for this brilliant idea and, and Thank for, you. Mike for making it happen. It's, it was just <laughs> to watch it unfold. Um, he, so in terms of when, 
when this piece um, is gonna come to life with the full orchestra, um, we don't have a specific date on the, on the books yet, but we are committed to bringing this, bring this to life with LACO. Um, obviously there's a lot up in the air right now and our focus now is on getting through um, the, the, the ramifications of the cancellations on, on this season. Um, and then our priority one is looking at what that means for next season and really understanding yeah. that, it, you know, we have announced a season next year and um, we need to understand for pieces like this one, we, we got to hear this. We got to bring this yeah. to life. <laughs> but that means it's going to come at the, at the possible expense of some changes on next season. And we need to make sure that we take the time to really look broadly at, um, at the scope of the challenge before us and understand what that means. But um, so it may not be the very first concert, but you, you have our commitment that this piece will, bring, will be brought to life with the, the full force of the play trample orchestra. So thanks for the question. Awesome. I heard it through, uh, through, ben, through Brandon that Ruth has something for us. I'm gonna. Okay. Hey. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. Um, hey. I, I, um, speaking of next season, um, we have the honor of having Peter Shin with us um, because he came out for his spring break from Yale and then Yale didn't want anybody to come back. So, um, so he's been here and will be here for a while. And I thought it was a great opportunity to introduce all of you yeah. to Peter. You can stick yourself into the image. Hey, Peter. <laughs> Hi, Juan Pablo. Nice to see you and congratulations. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you yeah. for giving us a really, um, <laughs> really uh, interesting look into your piece. I know this Thanks. is not the, the most ideal situation, but <laughs> get to hear it soon. And um, don't touch your face. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and Juan Pablo, I just want to say bravissimo along with Steve. I think the piece has come out so wonderfully and it's been so Thank fun to, to hear it in progress and now yeah. to recognize all those themes of the six characters and so forth. It's, it's just great and I can't wait to hear it live. Me too. Thanks so much. Yeah. yeah no, thank you. <laughs> all right, Juan Pablo, it's back to you. All right. Do you want to announce the next question i'm looking for more questions there's no one in the chat if you have oh, one june june the june the, okay yeah it's so the question is in performance will musicians be performing their parts as well huh? what do you mean what do you mean well i have you unmuted am, am i unmuted you're unmuted june you can talk hello, hello. hi Oh, hi. Congratulations. That was Thank so you. fun. Uh, I'm just wondering who will be wearing those masks? Okay, okay. Uh, so I chose six players. So um, we have Margaret Bajor doing the uh, character of El Santo, Andrew Shulman cello. So I chose them so that geographically they would face, naturally face each other on the stage. So they, have, they don't have to move from their place and they're gonna wear the masks uh, kind of like as a hat. So like, kind of like this. <laughs> and so uh, so they can, their vision is not compromised, but you'll see them, you know, playing their instrument and you'll see, um, you know, who's competing against who. So instruments are violin, Margaret, cello, Andrew, piano, I'm not sure now things have changed, but uh, piano and then timpani, Wade, uh, flute, Joachim, and trumpet, Eric. So, so it's kind of like one, two, and three. So th kind of like three against three geographically facing each other. So you'll see the players wearing their masks and we were also looking into lighting them so that you could tell who's fighting against who, but that's, we'll look into, into that further. But the idea is that visually you'll be able to experience this in a way that it's very clear who's competing against who um, while we hear the music. Yeah, yeah. Thank will you. There be, will there be subtitles as well? About oh, for, for the for the narrations? Who, yes. Who? I think we're going to include them in the program. In the, right. Is that correct, Mike? I think we're yeah we're thinking of just so that people can hear or can read uh, the different descriptions of what each character represents. Yeah. Ideally, I mean, um, the, the piece is very, 
specific in how I constructed it. It's, it's, it's almost like watching a film. But my intention, I mean, it, it, you know, it was to write a good piece of music. So it, it's not as important if you like get every single detail. It's just more of like you feel like you're at a wrestling match. That was my my goal. So yeah. So hopefully that'll happen as well. That's yeah. great. Thank you. Thank you. Ray had an interesting suggestion in the comments there. Um, Ray, did you want to elaborate on your? <laughs> well, it depends on how multimedia you're feeling, Juan Pablo. But I think we have a be, we could have a projector on the wall with the uh, with, scrolling with the, yeah, with the, that you just showed us here. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. 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 For what it's worth, my wife Anne says. That really enhanced it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of times uh, composers have a very specific image or story that they want to tell, and and um, I think this was a great opportunity to really like dig deep and and like just uh, share it with all of you. And and this process has really uh, my my opinion is that the, the process made the piece. The fact that I was able to present for you guys four times and get your feedback and, you know, show you bit by bit how the piece was written yeah. really informed the, the end product. So I'm so, so, so grateful that I was a part of this sound investment and that you guys joined me. Like it's, this has been- Do you, have you ever composed a major piece of music that did not have a real life corollary to it? Um, I've written a, a couple, but most of my pieces are very narrative driven. So I always come up, come up with the title first. I wanna know like exactly what I'm writing about. And then some kind of narrative, even, even if I don't share it with people, I, I always wanna know what I'm gonna say musically. And I think uh, that's a great privilege of being a, a living composer that you can tell your stories and, and connect with people. And I, and I think, why not use that platform to, to share something important? I mean, even with this piece that, that seems very uh, extroverted and fun and, and flashy, you know, these characters also have a, a very deeply rooted representation of what Mexico is rather, you know, religion, traditions, um, you know who the heroes are so so it's a it's been also a good chance to explore that and to explore different kinds of folk music uh, from Mexico and how they can inter interact with each other so there's many layers as to why I'm so excited about this piece it's, it's, it's not only something very attractive but it also like speaks about uh, things that I, I care very deeply about and that I'm very excited to share with all of you. Even if you never told the backstory, if you kept it completely secret, never told a soul, does yeah. having that narrative thread help you from a creative process? It, it helps a lot. Even even like the, the horn uh, excerpt that Michael played for us, I would have never written that if I didn't have the, the secret text that was, you know, behind that. So it always also helps to have, you know, all of these tools to, to be able to be creative. You know, that's, that's one of the, the main things you want to look forward to as a composer is like, how can I get inspired? How can I feel like I'm writing something meaningful? So yeah. all of those tricks really helped uh, produce the, the piece of, as a whole. No? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, uh, Juan Pablo, I think we are at the end of our questions. Um, so thank you so very much for this. This has just been fantastic. And I'm so grateful, you know, you had the creativity and the idea to bring this whole thing together like this. Yeah, so, yeah. Kudos <laughs> to you and thank you. No, thank you all so much. I mean, it's, it's, it's really been incredible to get to know each, each of you, to talk to you about all of these ideas to get feedback, you know, to really shape the piece based on what you guys were also feeling and thinking about them. And, and just for me, it, it, it really had a very positive effect on my own music. I, I, felt, I felt like I was super comfortable to write the best piece of music that I, uh, that I could. And, and most, 
most times when you're a composer, you know, you, you only get like a deadline, an instrumentation list, and that's pretty much it. You know, the orchestra, you get a week to rehearse with the orchestra and never hear back from them or like have this experience of collaborating with the community of the orchestra, the musicians. I was able to get together with so many musicians, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to bring them into the salons, get feedback. So it really stretched my rubber band as a composer and allowed me to do things that I wouldn't have right. cared to if, if I was just turning in a piece of music and, and hoping for the best. So this, this was a multi-step process that, that gave me, you know, so much energy and so much enthusiasm to write this piece of music. And I'm so grateful that we were able to, to do this, even if we were all at home taking care. This was amazing just to, to be able to close this chapter together and look forward to the premiere soon. And I hope to, you know, continue seeing you and, and working with you and in, in any capacity. This, this has been amazing. I'm very grateful to be a part of the Lake of Family. So thank you so much for joining us tonight and for believing in this, you know, the, the sound investment program, which is really the best thing I've seen as a composer in my career. So thank you for your faith in me and yeah, you know, well, you've got a, uh, Juan Pablo, you've got a ton of goodwill coming and I don't think yeah. you could have asked for anything more. So I'm going to unmute everybody and we yeah. congratulations. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you, Juan Pablo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 Stay well. But you're right. Adios, Juan Pablo. Gracias. Thank you. Just turn it off. Yeah. Just leave. All right. I'm gonna stop the live stream. Cool. Everyone's locking off. Oh, I see. That's what happened.